Hello and welcome to Sterling Gamer with me, Sterling. It's a series! Last episode was not a one-off. It's a full-blown series! To celebrate, I did a few things. Most notably, I gave it a name. Welcome to Retrospectives, a show where we talk about video games, their history, and their culture. Like it? I know you do. Next, I upgraded my backdrop. So that's pretty cool. Finally, I wanted to outdo Mario. Find something grander. Something that makes Mario look like small mushrooms. And while watching my daily dose of 90s ads, I found it. What Nintendo. And it turns out their mascot is one of my favorite video game characters ever. Sonic the Hedgehog, a classic game that put slippery butter on Nintendo's iron grip over the video game market. As with the last episode, we will start by going through the history of the game. While researching, I found that Sonic's story is a bit of a side story to Mario's. A uh, plague of shadows, the shovel of hope, if you will. Anyway, Sega was a company that made arcade games, witnessed the video game crash, and completely ignored it. They were great at just making games. One of the best at it, actually. That was, until the stinky little card company Nintendo started making their own games. No problem, they can coexist. Few establishments have just one arcade cabinet. No problem here, it's great. That was, until Nintendo released their home consoles. The Famicom, or NES, got rid of all use for arcades, and thus all use for Sega. They scrambled together a simple arcade console called the SG-1000. Me, but a thousand? It was a system on the same power level as the NES, and released in Japan and a few other countries, but oddly not America. It was an insane failure. I did not even know it existed until researching this video, and that's saying something. Like, do you guys know what a ColecoVision is? A few years later, in 1985, they released another console. Nintendo had the Nintendo Entertainment System, Sega had the Sega Master System. Sure guys, really original name. It too sold poorly. It was not much more powerful than the SG-1000 or the NES, and with worse games than the NES, it was a flop. Sega was showing no sign of giving up, because just three years later, they released yet another console. They were beginning to show what killed them in the end, console oversaturation, but that's a story for another day. The Genesis was a 16-bit system, meaning it could process information twice as fast as their old consoles or the NES. I called it a Genesis, which is what it was named over here, but in every other territory, it was called the Mega Drive. I prefer Genesis. It actually sold pretty well. Nothing crazy, and not nearly as much as Nintendo, but it sold. This was not enough for Sega, and they had a plan. The NES sold because of its games. They had Mario and Excitebike. By now they had Legend of Zelda and Metroid. These games sold consoles. Mario in particular was very popular, because he was Nintendo's mascot. Sega 2 had a mascot, Alex Kidd. No one likes Alex Kidd. Sega knew this, and wanted a new mascot, but instead of being creative, because who likes that, they held a company-wide character creation contest. Lots of submissions were sent in. Some of them were really good. They settled on this dude in pajamas with a Teddy Roosevelt-inspired mustache. That is, until a man named Yuji Naka sent in a picture of a little hedgehog. It was unnamed and uncolored, but interesting. Yuji Naka said that he envisioned a platformer similar to Mario, but faster. Whenever he would play Super Mario Bros, he would try to get through the first few levels as fast as possible. In a way, Yuji Naka sort of invented Mario's speedrunning. He explained that hedgehogs are known to be fast for their size, so he made that the character. Sega adored the little hedgehog. He had spunk, attitude, and was still pretty cute. He was made blue, like Sega's logo, and named Sonic after the term Sonic Boom, which is used to describe the moment something goes past the speed of sound. That fact 
likely inspired a song from a later game in the series. Rolling around at the speed of sound Got places to go, gotta follow my rainbow Can't stick around, got to keep moving on Guess what lies ahead, only one way to find out The Man in Pajamas was given a new getup and made the villain of the game And production started The actual production of the game is pretty boring, so I'll skip to the end The game is amazing Releasing on June 23rd, 1991, Sonic the Hedgehog did incredibly. It is a worthy competitor to Super Mario Bros., maybe even surpassing it in terms of quality and fun. It fixes most of my issues from Super Mario Bros., and even makes some of the good parts better. There is no multiplayer in sight, which is better than having garbage multiplayer. Plus, we'll revisit the concept later in the video. The controls are super smooth. They are momentum based, which makes things quite fun. To be fair, there are a few parts where you need some speed to pass, and you do that by just running around. It's not too big of an issue, though. The physics are great. I had no issues with them during my entire playthrough. The pacing is variable, rewarding fast players without punishing slow players. While Mario only had four level themes, Sonic has six super duper unique ones. Those six themes are the six main zones, each with three levels. That brings the levels up to 18, plus one extra level for the final boss. Mario had 32, but they are super short and linear. Mario only took me 40 minutes to beat, while Sonic took me an entire hour. Those are just the things that Mario fails at and Sonic exceeds at. As mentioned, he also improves on good things. Sonic the Hedgehog has so much more music than Mario. Not all songs are instant classics, but some are, and the rest are just really good. Sonic has a huge advantage over Mario in terms of art, since Sonic is on a system with much better art capabilities. But man, this looks incredible. Every zone looks interesting and beautiful, really showing off the power of a 16-bit system. Power-ups are not as prevalent as they are in Mario. You collect rings around the levels, which when hit with some, fly away. And when you get hit without any rings, you die. They act as a second hit instead of a mushroom, but surprisingly, the game is not a ton easier thanks to the rings being everywhere. There are also CRTs that give you a special effect, like a ripoff from the star from Mario, or another hit, or another life. Enemies are not as interesting to talk about because of the sheer amount of them, but each feel unique and interesting in gameplay. The other two things I talk about in my Mario video that I want to apply here are the story and the bad stuff. The story is very simple. Dr. Eggman, the pajama dude from earlier, has kidnapped woodland creatures and it's up to Sonic to save them and then stop Eggman. The games don't get too much of a story until the jump to 3D, and even then... I have very few issues with this game. I think the second zone is a little odd as a second zone, Labyrinth Zone Act 2 is a bit of a slog to get through, and the Chaos Emeralds are useless. Oh yeah, should probably mention those. If you can complete a stage with 50 or more rings, you will find a giant ring after the goal sign. If you jump in, you are brought to this trippy puzzle world that you have to navigate through to find these shiny rocks. Are we sure Sonic isn't drunk? If one is collected, it kicks you out and into the next stage. There are six in total to collect, each one getting harder and harder to obtain. Once you have all six, nothing happens! Until you beat the game, in which they will fly out of Sonic and make some flowers appear for a few seconds. The Chaos Emeralds are a fun collectible, but annoyingly useless. All in all, this is an incredible game. A few issues here and there, but nothing a sequel couldn't fix. Sega knew this and split the team that made Sonic into two divisions. One went to Japan, one went to America, and both started creating a second Sonic game. The game that the Japanese team made is yet another story for yet another day, but the American team created Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Something that Sega wanted to focus on in the sequel was multiplayer, so another character creation contest later, and we get my favorite video game character ever. Can ya guess who it is? 
A man named Yasushi Yamaguchi was the winner, and he wanted to name this little guy Miles Prower. Sega, on the other hand, wanted a more simplified name, Tails, to go with his twin tails. In the end, a compromise was made to name him Miles Prower, but everyone just calls him Tails, and now we never hear the name Miles Prower. Sonic 2 is a nearly perfect game. It improves on everything from the original, as well as fixing every issue with the original. Now instead of just six zones, we have 11. They do only have two stages each instead of three, but the stages are much bigger with more connecting pathways. We have a new move to get momentum in a small space, which really helps with the platforming. We can also play multiplayer in the main game using Tails. Mario did not get multiplayer in the base game until the Wii. There's also a race mode, where players can use Sonic and Tails and compete through a stage to see who's the fastest. The second zone is super memorable as a second stage. In fact, all the stages are fun. Best of all, they completely reworked the Chaos Emeralds! Now when you have at least 50 rings and hit a checkpoint, some stars will circle around it, and if you jump in, you get brought to this half pipe where the goal is to collect rings before you reach the end. These are so much more fun! And more fair. And they're even harder! In this game we have 7 Chaos Emeralds instead of just 6, and it's been that way ever since. Now when you collect 50 rings and jump into air, you become Super Sonic! I runs faster, jumps higher, and can only be killed by being squished or falling in a bottomless pit. He does absorb rings to work though, so you have to continue collecting those or you will become regular Sonic again. It's so much fun to fly through a stage or decimate a boss in record time, and it doesn't feel too overpowered because it is super duper hard to earn. This time, Eggman's plan is much bigger, to take over the world using his Death Star. I I mean Death Egg, powered by the Chaos Emeralds. It's up to Sonic and his number one fan, Tails, to save the day. Did I mention I love Tails? He's so cute in his classic appearances, but in his modern ones, he's a nerd like me. He has the ability to spin his twin tail super fast to fly, or keep up with Sonic. As previously mentioned, this game is nearly perfect. I only have one issue with this game. You. Mecha Sonic is so bad. You get in the Death Egg, and there are no rings whatsoever. That means no extra hits and no Super Sonic to save you. You then have to fight this dumb robot who has moves that you cannot predict, and it's just. just oh, I hate it! Other than that boss fight, I love this game. And you can all play it for free on mobile. That's the best way to play it. It's got widescreen, fixed some bugs, added a whole scrapped zone, and you could play as Knuckles. Who is Knuckles? I hear 7% of you asking. Allow me to explain. After the perfection that was Sonic 2, Sega went to work on a third game. This one was to be the biggest, best, most exciting game yet. Just two years after Sonic 2 released, Sonic 3 released. The game only has six zones with two acts each, although these acts are massive and sprawling with plenty of hidden areas and paths. Sonic, now wielding all the Chaos Emeralds, is flying with Tails when they find a new island. On it, they find this dude named Knuckles, and he steals all their Chaos Emeralds. While trying to retrieve them, Sonic and Tails find Dr. Eggman and Knuckles working together. It then fades into the next zone, which is something all the zones do in this game, and it's really cool. To get the Chaos Emeralds, you go back to the giant rings, but this time they're hidden instead of being ring dependent. When you enter one, you get this 3D puzzle where you need to get these blue spheres. I don't know if it's because I've played these special stages for years, but these seem like the easiest special stages in the original trilogy. Goalpost still gets sparkles if hit with 50 or more rings, leading to a vending machine where you can get a plethora of items, such as elemental shields. These replace the second hit shields from the past games, and they each give Sonic a passive ability and a special new move. The fire shield makes Sonic immune to heat and lets him dash forward into air. 
The bubble shield lets him breathe underwater infinitely and also bounce. Finally, the lightning shield makes rings fly to you and gifts you a double jump. All three shields also deflect most projectiles, making them infinitely better than the original shields. This game redesigned all the characters, and I don't like it as much. Sonic got the biggest redesign, and Sonic 2 sprites are just better. The music may be the best in the series so far, at least as good as Sonic 2. Finally, I like all the zones, except launch base zone. Normally it would be a decent zone, it feels like a really good second to last zone. The problem is that it's a final zone. Eggman made a new death egg and is trying to launch it into space using his new facility. Knuckles is there too, but he just falls. Whatever, I have Super Sonic, so this will be an awesome final battle. What? He can hurt Super Sonic? Oh, it's on, Eggman. This is gonna be the most awesome battle in the series. Well, that was easy. It did not feel like the final boss. The Death Egg fails to launch and falls to Earth. The end. No explanation for Knuckles, no fun final boss, nothing. This game feels incomplete, because it is. It's one of two games to finish the original trilogy, the second one being Sonic and Knuckles. I really want to talk about this game, but we're running out of time, so I will make another video talking about the Japanese project that was made during Sonic 2, and talk about the final game in the original series, unless you count Mania. These three games are genre definers, and really set up Sega as Nintendo's biggest rival at the time. Sonic games are still made to this day, and have left an eternal impact on the gaming scene. I love the Sonic series. I like all of them, it's one of my favorite series ever. Some of the later games do have some issues, but that's why it's fun to look back 30 years, and look at where it all started. I hope you all enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. These videos take hours to make, so if you could please subscribe and tell a friend, that would be great. This concludes the second episode of Retrospective. I hope this video wasn't too slow. I sort of ran out of rings near the end, so I ran out of energy. Don't you just love how punny I am? One final thing to mention is to eat your chili dogs and stay out of giant gambling machines. I don't think I'm gonna follow my own advice. He's really making this into serious. I need to stop this. See you all later. Hello? Prepare for court. Wait, what?